G'day guys and welcome to another Learn Some Drums lesson. First up I wanted to say I got Instagram, so head on over there and follow at Learn Some Drums. And also if you want to, take a photo of where you practice drums and tag me. Because I'd be really interested to know where you guys practice. Is it your bedroom? The living room? Is it outside? Is it at school? Is it in a hall? I don't know. Let me know. Anyway, this lesson is for Mr. Brightside by The Killers, which is a super classic song. And once we have the verse, the chorus, and the post-chorus grooves down, the rest of it really should fall into place. So let's jump on the kit and get straight into it. The drums at the beginning of this song sound really thin, and I think they're only coming through one channel. So if you have headphones on, they're just going to be coming in through one side. But luckily, the beat that we're playing in the intro is pretty much the same beat that we're going to play for the entire verse. So once you have this locked down, then you can use it again and again. The one thing to watch out for is the accents and the little sizzle hi-hat on the end of four as well, because I think that's what really makes this groove kind of very much Mr. Brightside and not just another 16th note groove. So at the very beginning, the drums sound like this. So as I said, the accent and that sizzle are really important and if you listen closely, sometimes that accent becomes a sizzle as well, it's just kind of hitting the hi-hats hard enough to get a bit of a sizzle. So keep an ear out for that and uh, work out kind of what works best for you, just so that you can kind of get it as close to the recording as possible. As we build up to when the real drums come in, we just play half of that bar over and over again and then we've got a little stop. So those two little bits go like this. So that little fill that's a stop on the end of three and beat four gets used over and over again in the song. So keep your ears open and you'll hear it pop up a bunch. Speaking of which, going into the next section, we go from the 16th notes onto the eighth notes and the little fill that we do just before that is pretty much the same. We're going 16th notes and then playing that same stop, but we'll just open up to eighth notes like this. So for the next section that I would call the pre-chorus, we're playing pretty much exactly what we were doing in the verse, but just with eighth notes on the hi-hats, nice and slushy. There's lots of cymbal sounds going on in this song, and as best I can make out, this is just a slushy hi-hat. So that goes like this. You might hear that little snare drum stop fill in there again, and you might hear the eighth notes on the kick drums just move around a little bit, but I'm sure you'll be able to pick that out. It's just kind of every now and again. Moving along, we're just about up to the tom bit, which is right before we hit the chorus. The fill going into the tom bit sounds like this. And then the toms right before the chorus go like this. Now we're up to the chorus and we're going to use the exact same beat that we used for the pre-chorus. So that just goes like this. Again, listen out for when the kick drums chop and change just a little bit. Now there's a tiny little fill once again before we get past the chorus into that instrumental post-chorus bit. And that little fill goes like this. For the post-chorus, we'll play exactly the same groove, but it just sounds a little bit different to me, so I think we'll chuck it up on a ride cymbal, or maybe over on a crash cymbal if you prefer. So definitely grab the same kick drum and snare drum pattern, but just move that right hand over, because I think that's how the post-chorus goes. And then we're back into a verse, and we're going to play that exactly the same as we did the first time. So 16th notes on the hi-hats, with those kick drums doing what they do, but don't forget, there's that little stop in the middle. And coming out of that stop, we use the same fill that we used before coming out of the tom section. So that goes like this. 
After that, we finish up the verse, and going into the pre-chorus this time, we have this crazy little fill that sounds like this. So then we have our pre-chorus that goes all the way up to the tom bit again. Coming out of the tom section, this time we have this straight eighth snare drum fill that goes just like this. Then we're back into our chorus again, which I'm sure you'll be able to pick up from the first time we played it. But at the very end of the chorus, there's this big fill that goes over kind of four bars right before we drop down. So that sounds like this. Okay, and now we're up to our outro, so we are nearly there. Now I can hear hi-hats and 16th bow snare drums going at the same time. So I think they probably overdub them. What we'll do, I think, is just grab the hi-hats at first and then slowly build it up to the snare drums and then build it up even further until we're into our last groove for the very end of the song. So first up, hi-hats. Okay, so we've played that big fill and now we are into the very end, which is pretty much identical to our post-chorus. So we're just going to play that over on the right cymbal, or a crash cymbal if you prefer. And we've just got that same groove going right the way through until the very last four bars. In the last four bars, we're just building right up. We've got kick drums playing eighth notes right the way through and snare drums and crash cymbals over the top, just like this. And there we go, that brings us to the end of Mr. Brightside by The Killers. So if you can grab the verse, the chorus, and the post-chorus grooves, then you've got most of the song sewn up, and any of the fills and all the extra bits are just the icing on the cake that you can work out as well. So hopefully that's been helpful. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. Otherwise, happy practicing. Catch you at the next lesson.